This video goes over the use of PNP transistors. You should already be familiar with how to use NPN transistors to switch circuit components. PNP transistors are similar to NPN transistors, with both having a base, collector, and emitter pin. In both cases, a current through the base of the transistor changes its ability to conduct electricity, though the direction of the current depends on the type of transistor used. We saw for NPN transistors that a small current passing through the base to the emitter will allow a much larger current to pass from the collector to the emitter. This can be done by applying a high voltage to the base relative to the emitter. For PNP transistors, a small current passing from the emitter to the base will allow a larger current to flow from the emitter to the collector. In contrast to the NPN transistor, this is done by applying a low voltage to the base relative to the emitter. Notice that the direction of current is shown in the circuit symbol with the NPN symbol showing an arrow leaving the base into the emitter, and the PNP symbol showing an arrow passing from the emitter into the base. Let's take a closer look at how PNP transistors are used for switching circuit components. In this example, I'll use a voltage of 3.3 volts, as this matches the voltage used by the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins when they are set high. Later, we'll look at how to work with larger voltages. We've already stated that the base must be set low, that is, to 0 volts to switch the transistor on. Likewise, when the base is set high to 3.3 volts, the transistor is switched off. This means that we must connect the load in our circuit to the collector on the PNP transistor. If we were to place the load on the emitter, we wouldn't get the correct voltage across the load. Lastly, we must connect the load to ground, or 0 volts. With this setup, we should expect a voltage of about 3.2 volts across the load as there will be a small voltage drop from the emitter to the collector. Thus, like NPN transistors, the load should always be placed on the collector. We just need to be careful as the collector and emitter are switched on the two types of transistors. Furthermore, NPN transistors are said to be used for low side switching, and PNP transistors are used for high side switching. The distinction is important as some circuits, such as an LED matrix, will sometimes need a specific type of switching. Note that regardless of the type of transistor used, a current limiting resistor must be placed on the base of the transistor. The value of the resistor is calculated in the same way as with NPN transistors. First, we need to analyze the collector side of the transistor. Here I'm using a red LED that needs approximately two volts at four milliamps. That means that a resistor needs to be included to use the remaining 1.3 volts at the same four milliamps. With this information, we can use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance of the resistor, which at 325 ohms is close to the standard 330 ohm resistor. Now to analyze the base. To switch on the resistor, a low voltage of 0 volts is applied to the base. When using a silicon-based transistor, there will always be a 0.7 volts drop between the base and the emitter. That means the current limiting resistor on the base will have 2.6 volts across it. To figure out the current need in the base, we must consider the current gain of the transistor, which is denoted by beta. Beta is usually at least 100, but to be safe, we'll assume a smaller value of 75. That means the current needed in the base is a tiny fraction of a milliamp. Lastly, we use Ohm's law to calculate the value of the resistor, which is roughly 49 kiloohms, with the closest smaller resistor being 47 kiloohms. Let's see the circuit working in practice. Here, the red and blue wires are connected to 3.3 volts and ground, respectively. The pinout of the transistor is as follows, and the white wires are simply there to provide some test points to measure voltages. In the current setup, the transistor is off as the base is connected to the 3.3 volt rail, but if we instead connect the base to 0 volts, then the transistor turns on. Of course, this would normally be done through code using a GPIO pin, but the idea is the same. This setup also gives us a chance to measure the voltage drop due to the transistor. Here we have the voltage across the load. If this is set at zero, and then we measure the voltage across the 3.3 volt rail, then we can see the voltage drop across the emitter to the collector, which here is about a 20th of a volt. Though this value is small, it'll depend on the voltage and current through the load. Let's now consider when a GPIO pin is attached to the base with the emitter attached to five volts. When the GPIO pin is set low, current passes into the base and the transistor is switched on. But when the GPIO pin is raised to 3.3 volts, there will still be a potential difference of 1.7 volts between the base and emitter, which will still cause a current to pass through the base, thus the transistor will remain on. This means that with this setup, the transistor can't be switched off. To solve this problem that exists with higher voltages, we need a slightly more complicated circuit. 
The PMP transistor is still the circuit element which handles the current through the load, but now the GPIO pin is connected to an NPN transistor. When the GPIO pin is set low, no current will pass through the base of the NPN transistor, which means it won't be conductive. This also means that current won't be able to flow from the emitter into the base of the PNP transistor. Thus, the PNP transistor will remain off. On the other hand, if the GPIO pin is set high, the NPN transistor will become conductive, and the base of the PNP transistor will be pulled low to zero volts. This causes the current to pass from the emitter to the base of the PNP transistor, switching it on. Thus, with this setup, we have the ability to do high side switching when the voltages across the transistor are larger than the voltages of the GPIO pins.